In almost the geographic center of Pennsylvania, less than 20 miles from Penn State University, is one of Center County's most beautiful and quaint small towns. With beautiful homes, historic landmarks, and friendly people. It's also home to the Roland Theater. The origins of the Roland Theater actually began in 1910. Um, at this site, there was the Pierce Opera House. In the early morning hours of December 30th, 1910, there was a large fire in downtown Phillipsburg um, that burned um, probably half of a block, including the Pierce Opera House. The ashes and debris from the fire remained at this site for five years. In 1915, Charles Roland was approached with um, the idea of, perch of building a high-class movie theater in Phillipsburg. Um, he was one that was, he would never say no to people who asked them him for things. He, um, at the beginning, well at that time, was probably Phillipsburg's biggest benefactor. He was president of the Michan and Coal Company. He was president of the Pittsburgh and Susquehanna Railroad. He was a congressman in the U.S. House of Representatives. So he was a wealthy businessman and he, he thought it was a good idea as well. So he bought the property off of um, Rosa Pierce at the end of 1915. Um, the construction started on the theater in 1916, and on June 4th, 1917, he opened the theater with the silent film Within the Law. And that was the beginning of our history here. I, I just so enjoy asking people what their first memory is of the Roland Theater, because even if you don't remember your first movie, you have a first memory of being in this theater. I mean, even if you remember it as an adult, everybody has a memory, and it's just really fun to, uh, you know, to hear people talk about their memories. Why is it so important to us? Because it's one of the most elegant, beautiful buildings that we have in Phillipsburg, and uh, it's a landmark, and we came here as children. It's always been a beautiful theater. Well, I think the building's important to the people of Phillipsburg because it's kind of a sign of a revitalization uh, that the town could go through. Um, uh, anyone that's been here for a long time remembers the glory days of this theater and so forth. I remember coming here, oh geez, probably when I was like six or seven years old with my, uh, with my parents and my dad. And then later on with my friends through high school, I went to uh, Phillipsburg High School here as well. I have memories of the Roland Theater since I was quite a young girl. I come from a large family. I'm the fifth of eight kids, and we were all very close in age, and it was a real treat whenever we were all able to come here as a family together. So spending time with my brothers and sisters here in the Roland, growing up here as one of our favorite memories, uh, from watching the very first Star Wars movie on the day that it came out to beautiful events like this evening, those are some fond memories. This place always holds such special memories for us. My earliest memory of the Roland was, was when I was a young girl in high school because I'm from a neighboring town and this is where you came on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon and you came in and in those days you come in in the middle of a movie and then you left in the middle of a movie and you didn't come today like you do, you start and you go and uh, it was a place to meet and have fun. I remember um, Frankenstein. <laughs> I just, you know, there's, a, and then I remember the cowboy movies. Those are the ones you saw on Saturday afternoon. This is exactly the kind of theater, if you're a middle-aged man who went to the movies when you were in the 50s and 40s, and you went with one of your parents, and that was your big outing for the week. That, that was my kids. My dad used to take me to a theater very much like this. And every week I looked forward to that. There was a time out with dad alone. And when I walk through those doors, I feel the same way, just a, happy to be here. We do have a clock that's on the wall down here. Uh, that has been there as long as I can remember, ever since I started coming in whenever I was a, a little kid here. Uh, at one time it was taken down and there had been a lot of people ask where it was at. So you kind of dug it out, 
I took it over to Altoona, had it uh, fixed back up, had the neon done over, and it was put back up again. The, uh, one of the things also I can remember whenever I was uh, watching the movie, especially whenever they had the old carbon arc rods, when they were showing the movie, the, uh, you'd be watching it and all of a sudden it would just kind of disappear. It would just kind of shrink up and disappear and it was the neatest thing to see. Uh, it usually took the uh, projectionist about 15 minutes to get it back together and then the movie would start again. And that was one place that uh, the projectionist, when, we, when they had the old uh, cameras and stuff up there, he wasn't able to leave. They had a sink up there, they had the bath, the toilet was right there, and it was well over 100 degrees in the, in the projection room. And when he was done for that night, he was done. <laughs> My best memory of the theater was during the war. My father was overseas. And the gentleman that ran the projector called my mother one day and said he had seen dad on the film for the uh, news. So my mother and my brother and I came to the theater and watched the movie and watched the news, but we didn't see daddy. And of course we cried. And he came down and he said, Mary, please don't leave. He said, because when the movie is over, he said, I will, I will run the film and stop it and see if you can see him. And the, the scene that he was in was when Patton's Third Army came north to meet the Sixth Armored Division in Germany. And they shook hands, Patton and the general shook hands and parted. My daddy was standing right behind them. He was an officer. It's the first I'd seen him in four years. The projectionist that Ruth and Drew referred to was no doubt Howard Graffus, who according to the Roland story began his career as a projectionist at the age of 16 years old in 1927. By 1957, Harold had become a proud owner and operator of the Roland Theater. And in 1973, Harold retired to California with his wife and daughter after 46 years at the Roland Theater. No story about the Roland would be complete without acknowledging his long-standing career and dedication to the Roland and to the people of Phillipsburg. Upon the completion of the Roland Theater, Charles Roland drafted a letter in which he stated, I have felt that we should have a theater building in Phillipsburg of size, safety, and perfection of appointment that would anticipate the future, maintain our best past traditions, and reflect the progressive spirit, while affording us a place to spend a delightful evening at home. It's just so important that the, the history continue here. Um, if you look at our past, we've had rocky times and we've had some really rocky times. I mean, the doors actually closed and hopefully we never have to do that again. But that being said, if the past is any indication, this community loves this theater. And I, I hope that that is, I, I think that will always be the case. And I, I think we have a good, good chance that um, maybe another hundred years from now there's going to be a new group of people here doing what we're doing and that you know we have a good base of people wanting to volunteer um, we're mostly operated on volunteers we have a couple part-time people this this theater remains open mostly because we have a volunteer manager we could not do this without him he can make he, anything he can fix anything and he runs our theater and works full-time elsewhere. 
And that enables us, that enables us to just keep going and keep offering the shows that we do. Um, so this, it truly is, it's a great project to be involved with. It's a great story and it is a treasure. Um, and I know the people in town, they all know it. We, you know, people in this area, they know that this is just a gem. And I, I just, I hope, I want, I, I talk, I, I mean, the book is called The Roland Story, and so I often refer to it that way, that I, I just really hope the story continues well into its second century and beyond.